So we're looking at now enough to have Kyra on the show this time and Chris as the director of the academy and Paul as team manager. We'll talk a bit about the preseason as well as the academy at uh, this time. Uh, Paul, please tell us about um, how you felt preseason went, some of the signings, a bit more updates on Kaya. It's been a while since you guys have been here, so uh, give us some updates on Kaya. Sure. Um, so this last off season was actually a very um, um, fruitful one for Kaya. Mm. Um, nice thing about it was for the first time in a long time, it felt like um, we had a clear vision and goal and path. Um, so we executed against that. Um, there's obviously a lot of change um, brought about by both um, personnel requirements by our coach, but also the new rules in the UFL in terms yeah. of foreign caps, which drove a lot of our preseason signings where, you know, we signed a lot of Filipinos, um, case in point being Joven Bedic, Danilo De Jong, um, Andrew Liao, um, to name a few. Mm -hmm. uh, we obviously also did sign a couple of foreigners um, to bolster the squad in certain positions. So um, Emmanuel Mbata would be one of them who mm -hmm. uh, you called out even before we started talking, <laughs> um, which is... Uh, Honestly, knew no thing about it in the back. Yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. a funny coincidence when your article came out and all of us looked at each other like, yeah. oh, where's he getting his info <laughs> from? Because <laughs> we're speaking with the guy. Um, and then, you know, a couple of Australians in uh, Scott Beginski and uh, Mitchell Davidson. Mm -hmm. We're pretty excited and want to see what they can do. There's a couple other signings I may have missed out, like uh, Dominic Del Rosario, who's a young uh, Filipino-Australian mm -hmm. as well. And then uh, Matias Alvarez, who um, is Argentinian. Yeah, th I hear there's a lot of uh, work in Australia to look at the Phil Australians uh, going on there. How much is Coach David involved with that? I know David is um, indirectly involved because he knows the guy that started the program, right. as well as uh, Lee Gunn, who used to play for the Philippines, yeah. um, used to play on the same club mm -hmm. team that um, David used to coach. So we're in contact that way. Obviously, Ali, who's there right now too, who's a Kaya player, mm -hmm. is there as well. So I'm in contact with him as well, getting updates on, you know, what are the quality of the kids coming out, mm -hmm. what ages, what positions. Um, so it's exciting. And so how do you think everything went in preseason, uh, leading up to let's go the second group stage? Uh, up up until that point, uh, how did everything go? I think it went well. Um, as far as Kaya is concerned. Um, I think we got what we wanted out of the preseason mm. with a lot of new parts um, it's very important to build that cohesion a lot of players just getting more familiar with one another understanding movements mm. understanding what David requires from the players and the team mm. um, so you know we weren't really obviously there was some controversy in the whole thing but it's not really about winning the preseason or it's building for the cup yeah. and then building for the league and I think we got what we wanted out of that mm. Yeah, there's a lot of building with Kyrie at the moment, with uh, a lot of the signings being quite young. Um, Chris, as the director of the academy, um, how how much has that vision with Kyrie been for the next few years in that sense of looking to build for the future and build up a, a core team of Kyrie players from Kyrie? Yeah, I think we've, um, well, our academy has been very successful. Um, we had the UFL Youth League, obviously, mm. which, which went extremely well for our academy this year. Um, on the 17 team um, were, were the champions of that particular age group and I think we have five uh, five guys from that team represented the uh, the U15-16 national team okay. uh, recently so um, you know we've got certainly four or five guys who are kind of on the cusp of progressing into the first mm -hmm. team if we're not quite physically mature enough or ready to, to make that progression just yet um, but they've been training with us and they've been involved and, and identified by the coach as being ones for the future so um, I think it's important that we try to promote from within and grow organically as best we can yeah. um, because it gives hope for a lot of young Filipinos growing up you know if they see other other kids from our academy progressing mm -hmm. and and playing for our for our men's team you know it gives young kids who are 9 10 11 mm -hmm. a, a, a hope that one day they could potentially play in the UFL or, or perhaps even with the national team or, mm -hmm. or even abroad so um, yeah, that's what we're trying to do with our academy is to, 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 to do our best to try to promote from within um, you know, and hopefully in a few years' time, maybe have uh, you know exclusively a homegrown team. That, that's that's mm. the dream, really. And you guys have probably got the most extensive academy, I think, for each of the age groups. Did you have any guess how many no, uh, players you're working with? Uh, the um, I think it varies depending on the season. So, yeah. for example, this summer we had probably upwards of around 400 kids playing. Mm. 
um, in the down season, which is probably around now. A lot of kids are playing reefer Reef and other other kind of events with their schools, so we're, our academy isn't quite as busy. Um, but but still, you know, we're, we're on a consistent basis. We're getting very very good numbers. So. I mean, in that respect, it's great that, that young kids are coming out and, and playing football and, and are getting good coaching, yeah. which, which is the most important thing. Yeah. So it's looking good for the future then, and looking to, to build for that and get a good homegrown core squad of players that you've, you've taught together, I guess, as well. Um, but going back to the, the senior team, you alluded to it before, Paul, um, but Eco first, could you walk us through what, what happened at, at the pre-season group stage, the second group stage there, with Kaya? I would say the, I don't one big mix-up in the UFL, because they all played against Kaya and yep. Kaya won the match 2-1. Mm. However, confirming them to participate in the semi-final phase B preseason. However, they saw some changes in results by the UFL for Global. Yeah. Kaya became the scapegoat, sad to say, from that, that result because it was they all like, go, going through replacing Kaya because of the result of the game between Leo and Global being overturned. Mm. So basically that that could have sh could have been a shot for Kaya to continue their journey in the preseason. But mm. Now let's just hope what happens now for them in the cup. Mm. Yeah, so to be specific, Rufo Sanchez's contract still under dispute uh, even now uh, was over uh, was the cause of that overturning of the yeah. all the results with Kaya. Just, well, sorry, with Global. <laughs> so maybe Kaya <laughs> signed Rufo now as well. So everyone's <laughs> signing Rufo. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so apologies, though. Uh, so um, because of the the overturning results, Loyola got a three nil default win, which on goal difference put them top of the group. Yeah. So despite losing both their group stages, uh, the second group stage, they made the semi finals and eventually went on to win the competition. Uh, Paul, how much does a, a problem like that affect? Um, Philippine football and, and drag that kind of competition down? I guess you can look at it both ways mm -hmm. where um, you could look at it negatively in terms of uh, it makes us look whatever yeah. you want to yeah. call it but you can also look at it the other way where better that we learn these mistakes now mm -hmm. rather yeah. than in an actual cup or league tournament so mm -hmm. I'm happier that it happened in the preseason and obviously we communicated our point to the UFL very clearly as to why we thought this was problematic and why um, we hope moving forward yeah. we learn from this and don't mm -hmm. um, commit this mistake again. So um, let's all be honest, football is very young in this country, um, especially the professional league. So um, these things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. It just so happened that it affected us this time. But um, I'd be confident to say that I would probably have as loud a voice to the UFL if it affected any other club because it's just not um, about Kaya, but about Philippine football growing all together. Yeah, Kaya were caught in the crossroads there, but with the academy, with the young uh, nature of the team, there's a lot to look forward to. So we'll give you all the updates, uh, Kaya, as you follow us at, at FTW Sport.